The Steps for Practicing Exchanging Self and Others Removing Obstacles Exchanging self and others doesn't mean perceiving others as oneself, nor does it mean considering others' possessions as one's own. If you perceive others' possessions as your own, that will be problematic. In that case, you would take others' items as if they were yours and not consider the act stealing. Instead, it means swapping one's attitudes toward oneself and others, changing to disregarding oneself and caring for others. In the past, we focused only on ourselves and not on sentient beings. Through practicing exchanging self and others, we should develop the same care for others as we do for ourselves and cultivate a sense of indifference toward ourselves as we do toward others. This practice may still involve attachments. Of course, in the beginning, it may be hard to practice. In other words, we should swap the positions of ourselves and others in our minds, caring for others as we care for ourselves and disregarding ourselves as we disregard others. This is what it means. Therefore, when shifting from solely seeking our happiness to wholeheartedly eliminating others' suffering, we should treat the attachment to ourselves as an enemy and eradicate the mindset that constantly focuses on our own happiness. We only think about ourselves. We may not necessarily consider our happiness, but we pursue various benefits for ourselves, such as wealth, lust, fame, food and sleep. We should uproot this mindset that constantly focuses on our own happiness. Those who haven't learned the Buddha's teachings or practiced exchanging self and others tend to seek benefits from others. After recognizing the merits of benefiting sentient beings, eradicating self-attachment and attaining the Buddha's compassion, and eliminating indifference toward others' suffering, we should strive to engage in extensive practices of benefiting others to help them eradicate suffering. In summary, exchanging self and others means not being attached to one's own happiness. Whatever we do, we aim to eliminate the suffering of sentient beings and benefit them. This means that we don't need to worry about ourselves. Why is that? Of course, we still have basic needs for our livelihood, though it may seem like we are considering ourselves. However, if you devote yourself to benefiting sentient beings, you won't lack necessities such as clothing, food, shelter and transportation. So don't worry. If one serves sentient beings wholeheartedly, I believe they won't lack necessities. However, ordinary beings often worry about their livelihood. They lack refuge and a sense of security. As a result, they constantly try to obtain and possess for themselves, worrying about not getting what they want. They may think, whatever others have, I want to have it too. If others have nice clothes, delicious food, apartments and cars, I also want to have them. Yet, do they have enough merits? It depends. If they don't have enough merits, they may commit negative actions. They may envy others and even resort to stealing, robbing or harming others. Anyway, they want to take from others. Such individuals are pitiable. In the age of Dharma decline, many people seek to take from others. A typical example is those who take the appearance kindness to them for granted. This indicates that they tend to seek benefits from others. Although parents willingly treat their children well, it may not always be the case for everyone. What if they didn't raise you? 
in helpless situations where there is no way to support a child, some parents may abandon the child. If they didn't raise you and instead chose to abort or drown you, you wouldn't have a chance to live, nor would you know at your next rebirth. They raised you, provided you with daily necessities and cared for you with love. We cannot even repay this kindness. Just from this perspective, if we cannot remember our parents' kindness, it indicates that we are ungrateful. Parents may have some expectations of you, sometimes for your safety and sometimes out of concern for your future livelihood. That's why they may be strict with you from a young age, even resorting to physical punishment or verbal scolding. We may not understand them and may even harbour resentment toward them. This indicates our lack of gratitude. There are many such people in the age of Dharma decline. They have got used to taking from their parents and are ungrateful. It is unfortunate to raise such an ungrateful child. It would be better not to raise them. Raising an ungrateful child is equivalent to harming them. Furthermore, you are also harming yourself. Benefiting others is benefiting yourself, while harming others is harming yourself. Countless parents are harming themselves because they spoil their children. This is a truth, but they haven't realised it. Letting a child indulge in pleasure may seem like caring for them, but in reality it is harming them. If parents are good Buddhist practitioners, they may wish their children to attain liberation from samsara and benefit sentient beings. It is fortunate to be born into such a family. Most parents are spoiling their children. In particular, the children who indulge in lavish lives can negatively influence society and really make contributions. It depends on parenting. Therefore, if parents lack cultivation, especially if they lack faith, the children that they raise can be terrible. This negatively affects both their family and society. Some children become like vampires after growing up, harming society and committing various illegal acts. Raising such children is definitely bad for the parents. If the child you raised ends up harming society, the karmic consequences you face will be terrifying. In summary, exchanging self and others means not being attached to one's own happiness. Whatever we do, we aim to eliminate the suffering of sentient beings and benefit them. This is the principle.